Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll go ahead and get started. We have a great opportunity today to learn about careers in the skilled trade fields. On behalf of the Iowa Intermediary Network, um, let's meet our panelists that are joining us. Our first panelist. Scott, I think that's you. <laughs> Why don't you move on? It looks like he might have got kicked out. All right, we maybe have some tech technical difficulties. We'll go to our second second panelist for today, Randy. Hey everybody, I'm Randy Malone. I'm the apprenticeship director for the Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Contractors of Iowa. Um, I know I look like your stereotypical plumber. I am not a plumber. <laughs> I am the director of the program, so I manage all of our students. So we have 200 um, plumbing and HVAC students in our program. Um, and we are a non-union program with participating companies all across Iowa. Um, we're really excited to be here. Thank you so much. Our second, or actually our third panelist for today. Hi, Michelle Ashline, Turner Construction. A uh, workforce development manager. Uh, my job at Turner is to uh, make connections for skilled trades um, careers uh, across the board, starting with, with you, high school student. Glad to be here. Thank you so much. And our final, final panelist joining us today. Steph Hi, everyone. I'm Steph Reed and I am a home builder here in the Des Moines Metro. Uh, a little bit about myself is I grew up believing girls could do anything they wanted to do. However, society ne didn't necessarily say the same thing. I grew up sanding walls and hanging wallpaper with my father and doing drywall um, in my teen years while I also played sports. Um, it was hard to have a job. So that was something that I did. And then later on, I had got married, had children went back to college thinking I wanted to be a nurse, got all the way down to my last class of my RN uh, and decided it wasn't what I was passionate about, that it wasn't really fill, filling me with what I wanted to do. So I got my real estate license and became uh, a builder rep um, through that, started selling houses and remembered what I loved so much about being a teenager with my father and the skilled trades. And uh, about uh, three, four years ago, I started my own building company and um, I hope today what you get from me is that I'm passionate about it. I hope young people know that these options are there. I wish I'd had more support from society when I was growing up. And I'm hoping that you guys find that today so that you can explore all the options that are out there for your career. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And I see Scott had some technical difficulties, but he's back with us. So Scott, I'll allow you an opportunity to introduce yourself today. Hi, I'm Scott Barnes, Assistant Business Manager with IBW 347. I've been asked to tell you about getting into the electrical trade. Um, education is key. Uh, you, you need to have your the solid education behind you, your math, your sciences, your reading, reading comprehension, and for all possible, as many shop classes as you can take in order to have the skills necessary to be in one of the skilled trades. Um, it's a five-year apprenticeship program with 8,000 hours on the job training. You'll be going to school for five weeks out of the year. Uh, you'll take a week off at a time to go to school. Thank you so much for our panelists for joining us today. And thanks to those that submitted questions in the registration process. We'll try to get to as many of those as we can. If for some reason we run out of time today and getting those answered, we will provide those to you via the email that was used for registration. So look for that information to come. So we'll go ahead and kind of get started with kind of just the, the first um, question, if you didn't already answer it in your introduction, but how did you know this, this career was the right choice for you? And I will ask that to Scott. Well, to be honest, I didn't. I used to be an RV mechanic and uh, we did a little bit of everything. We did plumbing, we did electrical work, we did mechanic work, carpenter work. Um, I remember when I was about 16, shorting out 110 and big old, big old boom. And I was like, ooh, I don't think I want to work with that stuff very much. 
And then the more I learned about it, the more desire became to learn, actually learn about it. Um, all I knew about was 110 volts. I never knew what three phase was or anything. A friend of mine got involved in the electrical union, got an apprenticeship program. And, and about two years later, I was calling him asking how you go about applying for the program. Um, so I did. I took all the steps. I applied. I went and took all the tests. Um, fortunately for me, I got accepted the first time I applied. And it's, it's been a blessing. I can't think of a better career choice, better career path for me. Uh, it's exciting. You learn something every single day. I've been in it for 32 years and, and you still learn. It's still still changing. It's still at the forefront of technology. Buildings are getting so smart today. Uh, light fixtures talk to thermostats. It's, it's just unbelievable where the electrical trade's gone in my 32 years. And Michelle, what about yourself? Yeah, thanks for letting me go next. I, I do want to say I felt so much energy from Scott there because I too I work on project. I've been in construction 20 years, most of it on project. And it is amazing to see um, the innovation that happens on our on our sites every day. Uh, I too happened into construction. Uh, I did computer coding before construction, data security. Uh, and part of my workforce story is a little bit of... Um, having to work two and sometimes three jobs um, really to maintain uh, rent and bills. Um, and construction was the first time that I only had to work one job. Uh, and, and some of the story in construction is one job is enough. You'll hear us all talking about that. And that's related to the pay that comes with construction um, uh, that includes benefits and, and education. So 20 years later, and um, I love it. Just like Scott, every day, every day. I, I think it's okay to say every day is awesome. Uh, you can't always have an awesome day. I know people say that, but it, it's great to come to work and be challenged and also be able to prove yourself every day. Randy, how about you? How do you know that this is the right career choice for you? Well, I, like Scott and Michelle, stumbled a little bit into this industry because I um, by career, I'm actually an association management professional. So I manage the Plumbing, Heating, Cooling Contractors Association. But one of the most exciting things for me has been seeing all of my students and the different places that they've come from um, along the lines of what Michelle talked about when one job is enough. Um, I've had students that have come into our program that were previously master's degree holder teachers. Um, I have had people that have come into our program they left a medical program to change careers in the middle. Um, and I've had people that have just graduated from high school and decided that sitting behind a desk is just not something that they wanted to do. And so they found a really big passion in plumbing and HVAC. It was something that they could accomplish. It was something that they could have. a. It's, I think, like Michelle said, it's, it's hard to say every day is awesome because sometimes not every day is awesome and not everything you do is awesome. But I think almost all of my students would agree that every day presents new challenges that are exciting to them. And I think it gives them the opportunity to think creatively and to think outside of the box that maybe they originally had put themselves in before they came into this field. And Steph, how about you? How did you know that this was the correct or the right career choice for yourself? Well, as you heard in my introduction, it took me a while to figure that out. And I think that's the best thing that I can tell everybody that's listening today is it's okay to take a while to figure out. It's okay to go different routes. It's okay to change your mind. And especially those kids coming out of high school, it's okay to know, not know what you want to do with your life. Because look at me, I'm not going to say how old I am, but getting ready to have a big birthday. And, um, you know, and I'm just now getting it figured out. But how I know it's right is that it, it feeds my soul. I mean, that that's the best way I know how to say it. Money is great. Um, you know, hard work is great. All that stuff is great. But when it also feeds your soul, you know, you're in the right place. And being able to give back tells me that it's feeding my soul. And I'm excited to be where I'm at. Another question from the group, um, and maybe I'll start with Michelle. Um, what do you think is the most in-demand career within the skill trades pathway? And maybe in your opinion, this is kind of a, a two-part, what has led to the shortage of um, in-skilled trades? 
Yeah, I think that you'll get different answers across the board, but I will say in construction skill trades, every position is in demand. And I actually think that's great because so many of us are gonna be naturally talented or have a natural ability in, in very, whether it's electrician, welder, plumber, whatever that is. Um, so I wouldn't, there's no one most needed field of construction area of skilled trade. Whatever you're good at, like we're looking for you, right? <laughs> it's in demand everywhere across Iowa. And when we talk about the shortage, uh, again, we'll probably get a few different answers across the board, but I would say um, that in Iowa, we haven't experienced the construction boom that we're currently experiencing. There's a billion dollars worth of work going on through Iowa right now. A lot of it happening um, here in central Iowa. Um, and I would say that's the big piece of it. Some of my friends will speak to some other pieces, um, but there's just a lot. Iowa's growing so much, right? Any, if you uh, listen to the news, they'll tell you that your small town grew by 7,000 people this year, right? Uh, uh, and that's happening out through, throughout all of Iowa and, and building is playing a part of that. Awesome, I see Randy shaking her head. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to you, Randy. Sure. Um, like Michelle said, you're going to get a different answer probably from each of us as far as which one is in shortage the most. Um, cause I will tell you plumbing and HVAC careers are 100% in need of more workers. And, uh, it is true though. I think it's across the board as far as skilled trades. And, you know, one thing we talk a lot about when I go to high schools and when I visit is that we have spent a really long time telling our students that, college is the best and only option, right? For your college, to your college. And it is not to say that those are not great options because they are. I, I'm a four-year college graduate. I went to college, um, but they're not the only option. And I think that one thing that has really shifted is that the trades are very different probably than they were back then when people were really saying, oh, go to college, go to college, because otherwise, you're not really getting an education. And I would say that, you know, one of the big changes now is that I, every apprenticeship program I know has an academic component and you spend time studying, you spend time working on books. It's not that you're not learning. It's not that you're not gaining that knowledge. It's just coming about it in a different way. Um, and so I think that's one of the reasons probably why we've seen a little bit of a shortage because we've been directing um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because we, we didn't find a good balance. We just all of a sudden we're like, everyone do this. And then everyone did. And now we're like, wait, wait, come back. We need more of you on this side. And um, I think, you know, the shortage, one of the things too, is that we just, we have a large population of baby boomers in Iowa. And a lot of those people are retiring and they're leaving fields like plumbing and HVAC. And so they're leaving big gaps in companies that have had these great experienced workers for 20, 30 years. And now they're saying, oh, these guys want to retire. They want to move somewhere warm. We really have to find a way to replace all of this talent. And so I think that's one of the big reasons for our shortage here as well. Steph, do you want to tackle that question next? Sure. Um, I completely agree with everything, obviously, that's been said here so far, and especially, you know, about um, telling kids that college is the only way to go. You know, I have three kids that just recently finished up college. I got two still finishing up college, and it was really uh, important for me to let them know that there were other options. They, they get to choose, and I think for me, the biggest things are exposure and opportunities. If the kids don't know about it, if adults don't even know about it, how do you expect us to fill that gap? You know, so on top of, you know, everything else, make sure they know about it by exposing them to it at an early age. So that way the schools can also start participating in it too, by getting the shop classes back, offering classes that go along the lines of in case they want to be entrepreneurs as opposed to everybody going to college. So that to me is, is what I would add to that. And Scott, your insight, please. I would agree with everything that's been said uh, wholeheartedly. All the skilled trades have shortages, some of them more so than others. Um, we're, we're short of journey level workers. We don't have any problem getting apprentices to apply. Um, the linemen have a hard time getting apprentices to apply. Great career for the right person. Um, the reason why, 
I honestly feel like the schools pushed everybody to the to the four year degrees, got rid of all the shop classes. Um, they made it seem like it was horrible if you didn't go to college. You know, there there is great careers out there in the skilled trades that that pay just as much or more than going to college. Um, and there are excellent career choices for the right people that don't want to, you know, that don't want to go to college and don't want that debt. Uh, we get we get people every year that come in with huge amounts of debt with degrees and they're starting all over as brand new first year apprentices and boy, they wish they would have done it sooner. I can tell you that much. So. We'll kind of follow up on that avenue as we talk about high school and maybe what classes can they take in high school to prepare them for a career in the um, skilled trades field? And we'll kind of go back to you, Scott, and what in your expertise would you recommend? What kind of classes would you suggest that they take during high school? Well, believe it or not, it's about the same things to go to college. Um, to be an electrician, I can only speak about the electricians. Uh, math is huge in the electrical field to make it through our apprenticeship program. You've got to be very, very proficient at a minimum of algebra, preferably with some geometry in there. Electrical is all math. Believe it or not, it's 100% math in order to figure out electrical circuits and everything else. So math is huge. The sciences, um, they're big. They'll help you a lot in reading and reading comprehension. Uh, to be in construction, you got to be able to look at a set of plants and one or a set of plans in one dimension and figure out what that owner wants, figure out where everything goes. You've got to be able to read spec books. And, and again, it's, it's, it's all reading and reading comprehension. You've got to really understand what you're reading and, and understand it, it's huge. And then the shop classes. We need people that know how to work with their hands. Uh, electricians use, believe it or not, almost every power tool made. It's really pretty unbelievable the amount of different tools that electricians get exposed to on a daily basis. And we need you to be able to work with your hands. All right, how about you, Michelle? What classes should they take in high school to help prepare them? All of them. I don't. <laughs> I want to. I want to piggyback off of, of what Scott said because I. Like I, I feel like 90% of us in math class uh, in high school are saying, I'm never gonna use this in the real world. When in fact you will, especially if you're interested in a career in the skilled trades. Um, and I was thinking about, you know, like what, what, do I, what do I do if I have a specific path in mind? What class can I take? Outside of having some specific math classes, I would take, take all of the classes that are available to you, especially the shop class that's gonna include some measurement, but we know all of our high schools don't have a, a shop class or even a welding class if we, if we were looking at that. Comprehension, bit, like so much surprising what a big deal that is when you get to the next step, what a big deal that is when you get out of high school. So I just really, any pay attention in every class because all of those matter once you graduate and are going to the next step. How about you, Randy? Any other thoughts on classes to prepare them? Yeah, um, I hate to do this to you guys, but again, with the math, it just it just is what it is. Um, if you think about how your school has plumbing systems and HVAC systems, those have to turn at different angles to fit inside your building. And if they don't, you're going to have a horrible mess in a really cold building. And so um, math is important because you have to, especially in those design phases, be able to figure out where all of those things should go and how the airflow and the water pressure. And so uh, as much as it pains me to say it, because I am, I am with you math in high school, I was like, why would I ever need this? But the fact is you probably do if you're going to go into the skilled trades. Um, and I would say, you know, along the same lines, anything you can do that's hands-on, anything that provides you the opportunity to work with tools or new techniques. Those are great. Um, in the plumbing and HVAC fields, another thing I would say is that probably some version of a communications class because we go into people's homes, we repair, um, we do a lot of work with builders and contractors. And so it's really important for you to have effective communication skills. Um, you, can't, you can't text your homeowner and say from the basement and be like, oh, I fixed your furnace. You actually have to communicate that to them. And so it's really important to be able to articulate that in a, in a, in a way that they effectively understand. 
I just want to say that I just figured out that math teachers make the world go round. <laughs> go math teachers. All right, and Steph, what about you? Um, what school classes, um, classroom instruction, what should students take in high school to prepare them? Well, obviously everything that's already been said is very important. I agree completely with the communications. Obviously math's real important, but I'm here to talk to the kid that's like me, that math is a struggle. Math was not my thing. I'm gifted at a lot of things, but math wasn't the one that God blessed me with. So naturally I married an accountant. Just kidding. He really is an accountant, but that's not why I married him. It just happened to be that he he accentuates my, my weakness and makes it a strength. But obviously don't give up if you're not good at math. Okay. I think that's the big thing I want to push out there right now because math is important, but you'll learn as you go and, and you will get it figured out. Don't let it stop you, I guess, is my big thing any more than you would let it stop you from pursuing your dreams to be a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant or whatever, you know, give it a try, go through it. That's what tutors are for, all those things. You'll get through it. You'll be okay. I think the big things that I would say is check with your local junior colleges. A lot of them will offer classes that are kind of introductions into our skilled trades world. Um, my, I'm going to use my son as an example. He wanted to be an architect, but while he was in high school, he got accepted into the architectural design technologies um, um, degree program or whatever. And uh, he started doing that in high school. And instead of going on to be an architect and taking five more years of school and hoping and praying he actually gets in because it's so tough to get in, he now draws my floor plans for my homes. And so he gets to work under an architect. So he's an architect's assistant making really great money. He just bought his first house. He just turned 25, just bought his first house on his own. He's doing all these things himself. And he took a little bit different path than he thought he was going to take but he's still finding the fulfillment and excitement and doing what he thought he always wanted to do. So check with your junior colleges, see what kind of opportunities are there that they may be offering to you while you're in high school. Um, sometimes they're paid for, sometimes they're not. I can't testify to that. I just know what it was like for him. And a lot of those classes, if they don't offer them at the high school, sometimes they'll pay for them or they'll be free to you. But again, that depends on which classes they are. So those are the things that I would bring up you know, for kids. Is it okay for me to, I want to reiterate what Steph said, and I'm just so glad that she said, don't let what you don't feel like you're good at deter you from getting to the next step, because skilled trades is all about um, earn while you learn, and, and you don't you don't come here being a master at anything. You learn it on the job. If you have an interest, um, the space is for you. You don't have to Again, you don't have to have mastered all of those things before you come here. And I think that's what's sweet about skilled trades, um, that we're ready for you wherever you're at um, in your, I guess we'll call it education experience. And just so you know, with things like math, sometimes for me, it's the hands-on that actually help with the math. So it kind of makes the math make sense. So remember that that's part of the skilled trades and what it's all about is connecting the two. Sometimes there's a disconnect in people like myself of those things. But once I do it hands-on, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I get this math. Why was this so hard? Because it got put in a context that I could understand and made it easy for me. Those are great advice um, for students. And most students will recognize those um, college classes as dual enrollment or dual credit classes at the local community colleges. So definitely, you know, talk to your counselor, school counselor, and help um, find that pathway into your community college. We are running kind of low on time, so I might just pin this to a couple of you. So I'm a 16 year old. How do I find out information um, about a program when I need to be 18 to start it? Um, I might, I'm gonna look at Scott. I'm gonna have you answer that question first. Well, the internet, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's all there. Uh, all the JTCs, all the apprenticeship programs have websites and it's a, it's a great place to start. You know, it's uh, the information highway. It's all there. That's, that's a good place to start. There's a lot of good videos that show you what, what different skilled trades do. I know we have a lot of videos out there that don't hold anything back. They show you what electric, what a day in the life of electricians like. They show you um, the good and the bad, both. So it, it, the information is there. Randy? Yeah, absolutely. I would say look up, use the internet, use your resources, talk to your counselors, um, find those programs that are local to you. Because I will talk to you if you are 10 
or I will talk to you if you are 18, I will talk to you whenever, because really that passion, there's no age, right? Definition on when that passion has to be. So um, use the internet and get that in there. Find, you know, local companies, a lot of times will have summer kind of positions that you can just be the, the gopher, the errand person, but that gives you a really good exposure to what they're doing every day. Um, and that can help you really pinpoint where your interest lies. Michelle? Yeah, pick Michelle, pick Michelle. I, <laughs> I want to, so Steph is a member of the HBA and our HBA friends are on here today. And um, for the first time in our area, last year, uh, we ran uh, Build My Future. HBA ran the program Build My Future, and they bought all of the skilled trades into one space where you could experience them all in one day. Um, so I think your, your, your school counselors have some connects when you're 16 and looking to identify some information, looking to make a connect. Um, uh, we're working hard for you in that space right now to help you find out what the next steps are. But be on the lookout for, for those field trips that get you there, for those summer programs. Um, ACE Mentor might be available in your area. That's kind of an after-school program. And, and we connect another after-school type program places like um, Boys and Girls Clubs as, as well. And if you're not seeing what you, if you're not seeing any of these things there, ask somebody. They'll, they'll find us for you, right? If you can't find us, ask someone else. They'll help you find us. But look out for Build My Future. We might get a plug for that before this is over today. And I'm going to throw it back to you for probably one final question. Thanks, Carrie. All right. We all have heard a lot of myths about taking a career or having a career in the skilled trades field. I wanna close out this opportunity that we've had today with allowing you to break or bust that myth. What is one myth about a career in the skilled trades that you would like to bust? And I'll start with Michelle. Thank you for starting with me. One myth in the skilled trades. Uh, I'm a woman in construction and I just wanna say a woman can be anything in construction. And I think, you know, if there are um, young women watching this, we, we know that, like we know that we can do anything, but I think no one's saying this space is for you. Like we need someone to say, dude, you can be a plumber, right? You, you're a superintendent, you can uh, engineer, an electrician, a carpenter, whatever you wanna be, we have a space for you. And I want to I want to say something else. Like I think sometimes when our parents think about construction, they think, oh, it's hard on your knees, it's hard on your back. Um, so many of the innovations that have come into construction today um, help us live um, healthier, safer lives. Um, uh, on my project, everything on wheels, that's gonna save your back and and your knees. So I just uh, some of those things. Construction is gonna be dangerous. These are the things that we, you're working with electricity. If you're an electrician, those are things you have to be cautious of. But we have, we have made a lot of innovations to make this not your grandpa's construction site. All right, Scott, is there a myth that you would like to take the time to bust today? Well, what, what Michelle said is 100% true. I mean, it's, it's construction is for everyone that would have a passion for it. Um, women, there's more women in construction today than, than ever before. Uh, we're getting more and more to come into our apprenticeship programs. Um, I would openly encourage them to apply. It's, uh, that's probably the single biggest myth I think about construction is that it's not for women. And, and for women, it is. You know, if you have a passion for it, by all means, pursue it. All right, Steph, throw it to you. Yeah, I'm going to echo on that. Jobs are genderless, period. There's nothing anyone has to do because they're a guy or a girl. There's nothing they can't do because they're a guy or a girl. They're genderless. And uh, the, the biggest myth, the second biggest myth, in my opinion, where it comes to the skilled trades is that it's a last chance opportunity career. You, you know, you've never, oh, you've got to be that because you couldn't be anything else. That's, that's baloney. Nope. Not true. It can be your first choice and you can love every minute of it and be just as fulfilled and excited as the doctor or the nurse or the accountant or anybody else. So don't ever let anybody tell you it's a last chance opportunity. It is your opportunity if you want it. And Randy? 
Yeah. Piggybacking off of what Steph said, I would, I was going to say that I think the biggest myth still, in spite of all of the information that we have out there is that somehow the trades are less than what you get if you go to college, that you having a career in the trades somehow makes you less than you weren't good enough to be that doctor or that lawyer. But, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right now that that is hundred percent not true. Um, and I don't, there's a ton of job security. We haven't talked a lot about that, but there's a lot of job security in the trades um, that you don't necessarily find in some other industries. And one thing I will say is that I know that I personally am very committed to indoor plumbing. And I know that all of you are too. And you need plumbers to be able to do that. In the middle of August, when it's 100 degrees outside, I'm very committed to my air conditioner. But I need my HVAC people to be able to make sure that that's working and operational. Um, because the first phone call when one of those things breaks is, I got to find somebody that can fix this. Right. And so you can be that person. It's not a less than situation. Um, it's just different and that's okay. And probably I went, like I told you before, I went to four-year school and probably most of my apprentices make more money than I do. So, so there you go. <laughs> can I say one last thing? I just wanted to say kind of on her, her topic there that, you know, you can, you can do some pretty incredible stuff here. And what's the worst that's going to happen to you parents out there, to you kids out there that your parents are really talking about college and, and that may be your route. And that's wonderful. We're here to help everybody do what they're passionate about. But what happens if you go the skill tra trades route first, you wind up with a skill you can use for the rest of your life and make money doing it. Bottom line. So there's nothing to lose in my opinion. Awesome. Such great information. We're going to close out with a little recap. We've heard um, segments about the Build My Future event that was hosted in 2019. Fingers crossed for 2021. Um, but we'll close out with that. Um, we didn't get to all of our questions. Thank you so much for everybody joining us today. We will get that those answered to you and sent via the email. Please don't forget about that survey link that was also in the registration um, confirmation that you got for the Zoom login information for today. Please have the opportunity for your students and the educators to, to complete that survey to help us out. And if I can um, show this recap to you real quick. And thank you so much for joining us. And it's not going to show. So <laughs> it reverted back. So thank you so much. Um, we will send the link to those videos as well in the follow-up email. Thank you so much.